Today, I have the privilege and honor to get some FaceTime with one of the busiest people in all of California. Her name is Cha-Cha McGinnis, and she's been with Sitesman for a few years, but as you're about to see, she's mastered the art of networking, building relationships, fostering relationships, and getting in front of as many people at once as possible, which has helped her fuel her growth in a big way. She also loves human interaction and conversations. Why? Because she truly cares. She's fascinated by people and always looks to help and give before she looks to sell anything. And when it comes to selling, she doesn't just sell websites and marketing services. She insists that she sells an experience. An experience that dynamically, favorably impacts a business's bottom line. She's customer success obsessed and is generous enough to spend some time helping us understand how she achieved her own success. I cannot wait for you to hear from her today. Cha-Cha, thank you so much for doing this today. So nice to see you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And it's, it's so nice to join you and your team, Justin, on this call. So thank you. So I want to start by hearing from you a little bit of your background. What can you share about yourself so that people can get to know Cha-Cha a little better? I, well, so I have been in sales, advertising, and marketing for about 25 years now. Yeah, so I was uh, one of those folks uh, that were around when AOL was on the uh, the CDs. Through the years, I have had to adapt and transform as well as help my clients adapt and transform to now we are living in a digital age and things are not going backwards. So making sure that I stay abreast and aware of innovative strategies to help my clients stay innovative. That's awesome. And now you grew up in Illinois, right? And then you moved to California. You've been there for a while? I did. I am uh, from Chicago. And so I have lived in California for about 12 years now. So I have to say, I don't miss shoveling snow. You, you all can have that. <laughs> I like fun in the sun. What were you doing when you found Sightswan? And what made you seek out something like this? Yeah. So like I said, you know, I've been in sales advertising and marketing for quite some time. I've worked with Fortune 500 companies and I decided that I wanted to help small businesses in my community. I started my company uh, because I saw so many businesses that I knew. I know the owners, I knew the type of the quality of services that they offer and they were going out of business, you know, and it was at such a staggering amount of businesses uh, going out of business that I said, I, I have the knowledge, I have the strategies and the know-how that I want to help small businesses. And so I stepped away from corporate America to start my own company, helping small and medium businesses with digital strategies to keep the phone ringing and the door swinging. So prior to uh, joining Sightswan, I tried a number of different uh, solutions. So hence the name California Beacons, I actually started the company focused on beacon marketing and uh, reaching uh, users by way of uh, beacons when they're in facilities, when they're within a certain range uh, of a beacon. And so that was how the company started, was focused on strictly beacon marketing. So you have this high paying six figure job and you say, you know what, I'm actually more concerned about helping the small businesses that make up the fabric of our community. I'm gonna quit that and I'm gonna focus all my energy on helping small businesses. And at first it sounds like you might have stumbled a little bit in finding the right thing that was going to build a foundation for your business, but then you chose to make Sitespawn and building websites for small businesses kind of that foundation, am I right? I did, uh, I did stumble in the beginning, of course. Uh, you know, that's what happens in small business startup, right? I'm just gonna sell all these beacons and because everybody's on their mobile devices, but the one thing that I didn't take into account when I started was that there's a full circle strategy around servicing and reaching uh, that customer. And so, you know, I did a little more research and figured out, okay, everything starts pretty much at Google. And so making sure that businesses are ready right at that start for customers to know who they are, what they do, how to interact with them. I wanted to make sure that I was at the beginning of that phase and, and that's with their website. Yeah. Uh, 
to say beginning or even center because I sometimes describe marketing as a wheel, a wheel with spokes. I kind of think of like a bicycle wheel, right? Where the hub of that wheel, picture that as the website. And then the spokes that come off of it, which help the wheel turn are going to be different things like your text message marketing, your email marketing, your local listings, your reputation management, and in your case beacons as well. All those different things stem to and from the hub which is the website. So it really is a foundation of any and all small business marketing. And that's what's kind of cool about it is that you get opened up to all these other possibilities of marketing initiatives because if you own that website relationship, they come to you for everything, right? Has anyone ever, ever said to you, oh, cha-cha, you know, I'm thinking about doing this with my marketing or that with my marketing. What do you think? They almost come to you like a consultant. Am I right? Yes, and and so it, it, like you're saying, it goes back to relationship, right? It is building that strong relationship at the beginning with your customer. And if you're doing it for the right reasons, right? You know, that relationship is going to be sticky anyway because you care. So you're absolutely right that it does open up other possibilities and other opportunities depending on how you build the foundation of that relationship with your customer. Right, and look, if you're getting into this line of business, chances are you like talking to people and you like building relationships. So it shouldn't hopefully, be a struggle for anyone. You should. Hopefully it shouldn't be a struggle for anyone to get into that frame of mind and uh, keep it a forefront that this is something that's all built around relationships. And I think you've demonstrated that quite well. So tell me about this, since we're talking about selling websites, can you think back to the first website that you sold using SiteSwan? And could you tell us about that? What was that like? My first website, my goodness, I, I have I've been with SiteSwan for some years now. My first website was a skin therapy wellness website. And uh, it was so exciting. It was actually a referral from another customer that I was trying to sell a website uh, to at that time, a barber shop. So I'm pitching the barber shop and they say, oh my gosh, this is so awesome. There's a lady that has a beauty salon that's right down the street from us here. She's our counterpart. You have to go and meet her. And I said, okay. So they hand walked me down to her salon and he says, I'm sold. I, you know, I like it, but I want you to meet her. You're, she needs you. And so he walked me down to her salon, which was a couple of doors down uh, from him. And when I got there and I'm pitching her and her sister was there at the salon having served is done and she's listening and she's like I need you uh, and so so just in that one visit that I was you know uh, pitching services to a barber shop they were so excited and so impressed with what I was offering that they immediately started introducing me to other people uh, and wow. so you know it's I say that's a solid story there of have conviction about what it is that you offer. Uh, you've got a great service uh, with the partnership through SiteSwan and you can confidently walk in and know that, hey, I've got a great solution that I can help you, you know, make sure that your digital presence is top notch, you know, when you're dealing with customers. And guess what? When I pitched the barbershop, there was a, a template that was already pre-done. And so I said, hang on, let me show you something. Let me show you what we can do. I created this for you before walking in and I wanted to show it to you. I created it while I was standing there. <laughs> Uh, and so when I when I turned it around and showed it on the iPad, that's when he said, oh my gosh, you have got to meet the salon down the way here. And what did I do? The same thing was I went in and used one of those uh, nice templates that are there and said, now here's what I can do for you. And so wow. it just gave me that resource and gave me that additional confidence of, hey, I've got a team here that handles all of this for me to make sure that I look good when I go out and do what I do best. And that's talking to customers and helping them solve problems that sometimes they don't even know they have. Right. And so that very first site that I sold was to the salon's sister who has a skin therapy and wellness spa. She was the very first website and which ultimately the salon ended up coming on as a client and I picked up more clients from there because they also referred me to clients. 
So that was the first story. Now, that was the very first sight. And, and I left there and I had that, that feeling of, yes, I did that. And I was ready to, to walk into other businesses that, hey, these guys just uh, got on board with us. You need to check out what I can do for you. Uh, and yeah. so, it, you know, you got to have fun doing what you do. You know, find you have fun. fun and excitement uh, in what you do at the same time, that enjoyment and that good feeling that I'm helping businesses solve problems. Oh, yeah. And, you know, what I think it points to also is that you need to go out there and talk to people. Some people are very hesitant, very shy about, oh, I don't know if I should. Lots of businesses, lots of business owners are eager to get their business online. They need to get their business online, but guess what no one's done? No one before you has ever walked in with the confidence and composure and conviction saying, hey, I've been working on a website designed for your business that I think you're gonna love. Can I show it to you? No one else is saying that because they're not using a platform that affords them the ability to do that. And of course, you know, produce a website that's impressive, that's going to wow and amaze them. So I think that's important for everybody to hear. You gotta go out there. You got to talk to people because you never know yeah. if you're going to stumble into a three sale deal just by talking yeah. to one barber. That's awesome. Yeah, you can't be afraid to talk to people because, you know, everybody's a human being. You know, it's we all have business needs. We all need help. And guess what? Sometimes those business owners don't know what they need, you yeah. know, so they may be using a Facebook page or an Instagram page or, you know, whatever means it is that they're trying to use. And it just may be because they don't know the value in having, you know, a website or having that presence there, you know, when someone's searching Google. And that's where you have to look within yourself and say, okay, where's that expert in me that one, I believe in the partnership that I have, that there's templates in place that will help me deliver an amazing solution. Am I prepared to step in and reach to that customer every 30 days, reach to that customer every quarter? You know, ask the customer, what is it that keeps them up at night? You know, and so it's, you have to ask yourself, am I willing to be that, that value partner for my customer? Because you have the solutions. It's yeah. just a matter of getting outside of yourself sometimes and getting out there and just asking questions. That's the easiest way to start a conversation is just ask a question. You're 100% right. 100% right. So now I'm not sure if you're still doing that level of prospecting now that you've grown and you've got a lot more clients, but I want to find out from you about how much time do you find yourself devoting to your web design business now, each week or month, or however you want to measure it? Well, right now we've grown quite a bit from where we started so right now i'd say we probably put in about 10 hours specific to the website portion of the business so it sounds like you're not making a huge time commitment on a regular basis but you're still able to constantly build up the client base and build up the recurring revenue and i think for a lot of people that's a major concern right i need to or i want to supplement my income i'm not prepared to quit my job the way you were able to do at that time in your life. So knowing that it can be done without a full-time commitment, I think is important to people, but also knowing that you have the ability to earn even more from each client is also important by offering additional services. And before I ask you exactly what additional services that you are offering, what was the best technique that you've been able to establish to take on as many clients as you've been able to so quickly and without that full-time commitment? So I understand how someone getting started at building their website business uh, would be concerned about the time they're putting in, making the money, right? I, I get it, you know, people have to pay bills, you know, a carton of eggs don't cost what it used to. Uh, and so sure. I, I understand that everyone may be concerned about, you know, how do I build this business fast? How do I, you know, at the same time, keep it affordable for small businesses? And it's very difficult doable. Having that strategy in place, right, you want to prepare your, your own marketing strategy first and make sure that you know who you're going after, who you're targeting, uh, what those uh, prices are going to be, making sure that you know for every dollar that I put out, how am I going to make two or three back? And so 
having that plan in place first will keep you focused and guided on your goal. So now let's jump ahead to you've got that plan. You know that, okay, for this month, I want to sell 10 websites this month. Okay, so how do you go about doing that? Well, you have the resource available to you, the prospecting tool that's within that site swan. So you can very well from that point say, okay, I'm just going to focus on barbershops this week, or I'm going to focus on dry cleaners this week. And so it makes it a lot more manageable for you because now you're in the same mindset for the entire week or for the entire month. And you know, if you walk to this dry cleaners and they say, no, not interested, it's very easy to go to the next one. If they say not interested, that's all right, go to the next one because it's repetition, it's doing the same thing. And so create that schedule for yourself of, you know, not creating these different cycles of now I'm at a restaurant. Okay, now I'm going to a barbershop. Now I'm going to a doctor's office. No, keep yourself in the same mindset so that you can stay self-motivated. That's the first thing I would say. The second thing is expand your reach. So yes, I can imagine the first thing people would think is, okay, I've got to go knocking door to door. Okay, that's fine. One of the strategies I implemented was I wanted to get in front of as many people as I possibly could every time I opened my mouth. And so I felt like my time is money. And so if I'm in front of a room of 20 people, I just gave myself 20 opportunities to interact with a business owner uh, to a higher degree versus uh, if I went and knocked on one door, it could have taken, you know, 20 minutes of my time, depending on if I made that interaction or not. And so I value my time as money. So in looking at how many networking events, how many groups can I get in front of in a week is how I maximize my marketing strategy for my business. And so, yeah, that's where I started. Just to throw uh, this fun story in there, when I first started, I went to my mayor and knocked on my mayor's door and said, hey, I'm not leaving. I want to talk to the mayor because I knew I was confident that my solutions would help small businesses. And so, uh, you know, by doing that, that opened a, a doorway for me to get in front of other business owners uh, at networking events, get in front of business owners, outreach and uh, mentorship events. And so I was actually invited to participate in an event called One Million Cups. Uh, so I was uh, in front of a room of people, of small business owners and leaders in the community. They in turn started sharing that information with other people. And, and when I when I did that first event, I said, gosh, this is it. This is it. Getting in front of groups of people and networking in front of people that can be an ambassador for me is where I need to be. And so uh, from that point, I made it my focus of whether it's a chamber event, whether it's charitable event, whatever event it was happening in the community, I was there. I wanted to make sure that people knew who I was. They, they knew that I was in the community and here to support them. And I just stayed on top of that model, which continued to open doors for me. And now it's open doors of partnerships where business owners, those partnerships are bringing business owners to me to support and, and mentor. Wow. So you've actually been able to, by getting in front of more people, build relationships that allow you to be able to form partnerships now with organizations that essentially are providing what sounds like a steady source of leads and prospects? Uh, that's correct. That's correct. So uh, by way of one of those uh, partnerships that from one of those organizations that meant that that work and coach and mentor small medium businesses that has grown into a partnership that has, uh, yes, expanded my business uh, revenue because it's now bringing leads to me uh, as well as uh, opportunities to expand my business and services with the customer beyond the contract uh, with that organization. Wow. So you found a group of people who are in need of the marketing website assistance that you offer and they've essentially contracted with you to be able to provide this service to those clients. And from there, you are now uh, offering them additional services. Talk to me about the additional services. What in particular 
do you find yourself most frequently uh, offering to small businesses who you've sold a site to? So uh, businesses that have a website with us, uh, we typically work with them for search engine optimization. Uh, we work with them for social media uh, marketing. Uh, so helping them uh, with the posting, uh, with the content, in addition to uh, social promo videos, even to PR, you know, their press releases. So ultimately, uh, we become their strategists. Uh, we help them with digital marketing strategies now. Uh, so not just their website, but that overall wheel, right, that we were talking about is, is pulling those spokes out from the center of the wheel to help them create that full service, that, that full circle marketing strategy you know email campaigns we also work with clients for email campaigns so we have two arms of our business now we have full service marketing which is where we come in and we pretty much become their in-house marketing agency uh, so we take over uh, everything uh, as i was just saying and the other side of our our business is uh because we were getting so flooded with those additional services of hey can you help me with a logo can you help me with a banner for my website can you help me with a banner for my facebook page so we were getting a little overwhelmed with those one-offs uh and so we decided to create a subscription-based uh model so similar to our websites we created a subscription-based model of unlimited graphic design services unlimited social promo videos uh, and unlimited content posting so all of our services went to a subscription-based model uh, just so that we weren't getting bombarded with that time of one-off services, you right. know, uh, three hours, two hours for one logo. Uh, we right. wanted to make sure that we keep our clients with us for those services, uh, but also decreasing that, that time commitment that we're spending on one project that may just be transactional. Got it. That is so cool. Then there's also uh, the workshop side of the business. And so I have since then also been able to pull my services of being uh, that strategist uh, and that coach out as well as, as a portion of our brand. And so I also, you know, uh, facilitate workshops, participate in uh, speaking engagements with regards to digital marketing. Wow. But I do like the idea that you've said, forget about the one-off stuff, because that's the real deal. I even tell people this about websites. They say, oh, well, you know, I have a client who's got a small budget. You know, how should I help them best? Should I discount the monthly fee? I said, no, 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 no. Don't discount the monthly fee. Discount the setup fee. Heck, give them the site for free to start because you don't care about the one-offs. You care about the recurring. And if you plan on building a business, that is going to be sustainable. It's going to require a monthly recurring income situation. And the only way you can do that is by charging people on a monthly basis for an ongoing service. So I think you've got the absolute right idea when it comes to offering those additional services, not just as one-offs, but as something that they commit to. Because let's be honest, a logo you might only need one time, but it doesn't stop and end there, right? As you just stated, right. graphic design. And out of curiosity, are you doing all that stuff in-house or are you outsourcing some of these additional services? In the beginning, we were outsourcing some of those additional services, but we've grown uh, and now we're able to handle those things in-house. That is awesome. That is so cool. All right. So you've accomplished a lot in the short time that you are with us with SiteSwan. And thinking back to one of our first conversations, I've come up with some tips for success. I think everyone can benefit from hearing, but that you can add something special to because of your specific experience. So I'm gonna go through them one by one and I want you to kind of help me drive the points home. How does that sound? Sounds great, let's do it. All right, cool. Let's start with the first one. My first tip for success, you have to put yourself out there. You have to walk right in. I know you mentioned walking into the mayor's office. Can we just hear a little bit more about how that went and, you know, about your your the network that you've been able to build because of just walking right in? Yeah, so I, I guess you can tell I'm, I'm not someone that's afraid to talk to people, right? <laughs> and 
uh, I, you know, I think I came out of the womb probably talking, but, uh, you know, I, like I said, I understand that everybody is a human being, right? And sometimes we don't know what we need or we don't know what resources are out there. And when I made the decision to step away from, you know, corporate America, my career, the funniest part of that is I came home and told my spouse that, hey, I'm going to leave my corporate job and I am going to help small businesses. And I will say I was crickets in my house for about a week. Uh, but but then, you know, we, we quickly came together and, you know, and we said, OK, it makes sense uh, because someone has to help small businesses. Uh, they're typically the ones that get left out sometimes with regards to resources. And so I said, honey, I'm going to the mayor's office tomorrow and I'm going to ask the mayor uh, to to help because I have knowledge, I have resources that will help all of the businesses in the community and they need to know about it. And so I think I got a little chuckle. And so I said, you watch me. And so the next day I went to my my local mayor's office and and the first thing uh the the young lady said is she said do you have an appointment and i said no i don't but he needs to come out and talk to me i have some information to share with him that's very important that's going to help all the small businesses in the community i'm going to sit here and wait until someone talks to me until he has time and so it was just the, the funniest thing. I look back at it now and I laugh and I set myself down on that little chair. And so it ended up resulting in a meeting with one of the mayor staff who then in turn, you know, introduced me to the group that does 1 million cups, which was the networking event in the community where the community comes together and supports two businesses a month that they feel are doing great things and has great potential. And so the community rallied behind my business as well with that event. And that was the event that just kind of kickstarted everything for me. So from day one, you started building your network. And what's your phrase about building a network? Your network is your net worth. That's right. You hear that, so everybody? Your network right. is your mm -hmm. net worth. I'll expound on that. So as you're attending these networking events and even on your own website, you know, you should have some way of capturing leads because these are the people who are saying, I like you. I want to do business the way you do business. You are awesome, Justin. And so these are the people that you want in your network. These are the people that if you reached out and said, hey, I'm offering an additional solution now called a reputation management that can you know, help you drive that social proof in the market, they'll probably say, oh, hey, tell me about it. What is it? Right. Yeah. And so, yes, your network is your net worth at any given time. You should be able to look into your network and discover where you can increase revenue. That's so true. When you can leverage your audience, the people who are in your network, who are in your circle, that's going to be an ever expanding circle. It allows you the ability to have access to so much, so many more revenue opportunities. That is very helpful, I think, for everyone. And yes, before when you mentioned Chamber earlier, just to clarify, uh, Cha Cha was referring to Chambers of Commerce, which are in almost every single market. Every single town mm -hmm. pretty much has one. There, I think, close to 10,000 across the country or something like that. So everyone should be joining a Chamber of Commerce. My second tip for success is to build and foster relationships. You've already started to discuss a little bit about the importance of building a relationship with people in the community. You talked about how personal connections can be very beneficial. They come with the added benefit of getting to know more people and getting to know your neighborhood a little bit better. Of course, getting involved in the Chamber of Commerce. But what else can you tell me about the importance of not just creating the relationships, but fostering them. One of the things I'll just quickly tag with is that we always recommend, and clearly you're doing this, in the monthly subscription that your website clients are paying you, we always tell you to include 
a quarterly conference call. It's a marketing chat to discuss how the business is evolving and making sure the site you've built for them is evolving with it. And out of those conversations come a lot of opportunities to help your clients more. But tell me about the emphasis that you've put on fostering relationships. Yeah, so I had a mindset shift a long time ago, and I think this is one of the things that helped me to be successful, not just in my own business, just throughout my career. And and that is, I challenge everyone to get out of the services business. And this is what I had to do. Uh, stop looking Looking at your partnership, you know, your site swan partnership as a service, you know, partnership because it's not. I got out of that mindset that I sell services, I sell product. No, no, no. I sell an experience and I am in the experience business. And so that's what leads me. That is what I lead with. You know, when I'm talking to clients, uh, when I'm pitching clients, if you ask me what I do, I don't sell products. I don't sell services. I dynamically impact a small business bottom line positively by way of digital solutions that make the phone ring and the door swing. I sell experience. And, and so that's what I challenge everyone, you know, listening in today to do is look at your business and, and understand how you can translate that into an experience for your customers. Now to specifically what you were saying, just in the question you were asking, yes, you do want to integrate those regular contacts with your customer, because the last thing you want is that call saying, I'm leaving you and here's why. There is never a time that your customer should be calling you saying, I'm leaving you and here's why, because you should have known about it before that time came. And if you were making those regular calls and, and reaching to your customers just to say, hey, just thinking of you, how's business? You know, are, are there any challenges you're seeing in business? Because they're the ones that are feet on the ground in their place. They can tell you if foot traffic has decreased this last two months. They can tell you if, oh my gosh, I, I had a couple customers write a few bad reviews about me. I can't believe it. They'll start to tell you the things that are challenging and the things that they're struggling with, or they'll even tell you the things that you're doing well to do more of. And so having that understanding and that basis is what helps you to create that experience with your customer because that is what makes them reach to you as their expert. That is what will have them defer to you when your competitor walks in the door and says, hey, we offer websites with a couple additional bells and whistles than what you have. That is the relationship that will have them say, oh, well, call Chacha and she'll let me know if it's something that I need to consider. <laughs> I love getting those phone calls. I'll even uh, let them go through the demo sometimes and, and, and see what they have to offer and be like, yeah, that's all right. We don't need it. Uh, and so, <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's what you want. And I'm a firm believer that the way you accomplish that relationship with your customer is, is letting them know that you're in the experience business. I'm not here to sell you a website. I'm not here to sell you a logo. I'm not here to sell you anything. I'm here as your partner. I'm here to create this experience with you that's going to drive customers to your door Make sure that your customers are aware of what it is that you offer when you offer it and the value that you bring to their business or the problem that you solve that they have. And I'll also add two more things that I remember you sharing with me at some point is that, you know, the only way you can foster a relationship is if you first create it and you first build it. And one of the things that you've started to put a, a major emphasis on, I hope everyone picked up on this was the way in which you just told us how you introduce yourself to your clients. You had a succinct one line that described what it is that you do in a creative and interesting way that leaves people wanting more. And that's a very effective thing. Something everyone I think should be practicing is if someone says, hey, who are you? Or they introduce you to someone. Oh, so-and-so, meet Cha-Cha. You have the opportunity right there to give them that one line and impress them, leave them curious, have them wondering. Everyone should have that one line. Work on it. It might take you a few minutes. Work on it. And you'll have something that you will be memorizing and using over and over again, improving as time goes on to the point where it's perfect. And of course, in order to build, in order to foster relationships, building them, introduce yourself the right way and make yourself 
visible. I think you had told me, um, you got to show up and put your face in the place. I remember that phrase that you used, mm -hmm. making yourself visible and whether figuratively speaking or literally speaking in your clients' lives and in their businesses, I think is super, super important. I have a couple more tips for success. Let's get into number three. My third tip for success is don't be afraid to say no. Ooh, that's a Tell good me one. what that means to you. Well, gosh, in the, in the beginning, when I started the business, I was a yes, ma'am. I did not want to tell anybody no. I did it because I wanted to grow my business. And I was afraid that if I said no and I lose this deal that, you know, my world's going to come crashing down. I'm, I'm never going to land another client, you know, so I was my own worst critic right and so i said yes to everything and i i quickly started figuring out that that's not a good strategy because that's a strategy that can cause your business to start going the opposite way and so i had to go back and look at my strategy and i had to say am i saying yes to too much and should i be saying no and i quickly did that hammer then the light bulb and I said, it's okay for me to say no to a client. It's okay for me to say, that's not my area of expertise. It's okay for me to say that here's what we can offer. And if it doesn't fit in this solution that we have, then I would recommend, you know, you take a look at some of these other solutions that probably can help you. Yeah. And so that's how I, I started the business. Yeah, I said yes to everything. And I had to learn the hard way that you can't say yes to everything because I think I, you know, disappointed a customer or two by saying yes. And it, the response should have been, I can't at this time. Right. Uh, that's not something that I can take on at this time, but there are other solutions out there that can help you with that. You're hundred percent right. It's, so two things on that. People join us with SiteSwan. And just recently we had uh, someone say to us, oh, I have this great opportunity to sell a website. It was like a, a specialty manufacturing company or something like that. Can you make a theme for that? And we said, look, we got over 250 themes for you to choose from. The technique we're recommending is to find a theme first and then find the clients that fit into that theme and pitch them. So even though you may have a relationship that you want to capitalize on, an opportunity you feel like you need to address, the answer in the beginning is no. If it doesn't align with what the system gives you the ability to do, which is a lot, don't do it right now. Wait, you shouldn't be venturing outside of our themes for the first, I always say for the first 10 or 20 sites that you build. Stick to the themes very, very strictly. It's going to allow you to build up that recurring revenue. And that's the name of the game. The second thing I'll add to that, you just made me think of it, is that um, I recently had an opportunity through someone in my network to do some design work for them. And I knew there was no website potential there because of the very specialized industry that they were in. But they liked design work they've seen from us. And they said, hey, could you do some design? And it was like a $2,000 job. And it was all convoluted and very difficult to understand and not really clear. And they weren't giving content and like all this stuff. And as much as you want to say yes to a large job, you got to remember it's a one off job and it does not fit into your wheelhouse. It's not what you were normally doing on a day to day basis. And since it doesn't fall into that category, you got to say no. And it was a very smart decision because it was a months long project that would not have ultimately been worth it. At Are all. you talking about me, Justin? No, no. <laughs> I'm, kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm sure I've sent you some requests uh, and you probably looked at it and was like, what in the world is this? But no, that is see, And that was one of those things that fueled me to say no. To to start saying no because you were very good at saying no to me uh, and so not something <laughs> not something that we can do and so i think I, I sat scratching my head sometimes for a little while like oh my gosh they said no to me like really and so no it's you're absolutely you're absolutely right and you can't be afraid to say no it builds credibility with your customers it expands that relationship you know creates value in that experience you know that you're offering to the customer and they see you as an expert in what it is that you do because you can say no right
Exactly. That's true too. Let's move on to my number four <laughs> tip for success, which is to play the long game. If you're waiting around for a big payday to come all at once, you will be waiting forever. Am I right? Yes, you are absolutely right. If you're waiting uh, for, you know, some fish to fall from the sky and land in your lap, well, I haven't seen that happen yet, you know? So it's about that mix of getting out and interacting with people, letting them know that you exist, right? Uh, because this is the number one reason why small businesses go out of business because people don't well, know wait. they exist. What about the relationship that you have with that organization? Aren't you playing a really long game with that. Can you tell us about that? Uh, so yeah, the partnerships uh, that I have with uh, various organizations that help small uh, and medium businesses, just to give you a little bit more detail there, I discounted my services, uh, website services, my coaching services tremendously. And the goal there is, uh, one, I want to help as many small and medium businesses as I can. Quote that says, you do the right things and the right things will happen. And and so I focus on making sure that I'm helping these small businesses, that I'm teaching them how to build sustainable strategies for their business so that when I walk away or if someone walks away and another agency comes in and asking them to spend $5,000 a month, they know how to say no and not just say no because it's an agency asking them to do something or, or saying no to it's $5,000, but saying no to, hey, I'm involved in my success. I'm involved in my strategy and and I know what needs to be done. I'm not setting and forgetting and handing it off to someone else. I want to be involved and I'm going to lead uh, what I want the strategy to look like. And so, yes, that's the long game that I'm looking at is ultimately, as these small businesses and startups grow, they'll need more of my services. I'm building that relationship through the experience with them that I'm here to support them. I'm here to answer their questions. I'm here to, to help them grow. I'm here to help them through that tough startup, through that tough side of being a solopreneur where you're doing everything, you know, teaching them how to add money back to their bottom line by taking on a lot of the DIY marketing themselves. I think what Justin, is, is saying here with playing that long game is not necessarily reaching out to those partnerships to make a sale today to you know make a, a thousand dollar sale you know in in the in the next conversation but creating sustainable relationships and partnerships that they care about your business growing. They want to see you grow as well so that it's a two-way cycle a two-way street that you're helping their businesses and that the business owners understand that you're helping them and it becomes, you know, reciprocal. They ultimately want to help you. They want to refer other people to you. They want to extend additional services, open the doorway for you to be able to expand those services. And so, yes, I think stay away from focusing on, I got to make the sale today and focus on how can I help my customer today? How can I, I help? I like that. It's network today. What value do I bring that's going to solve a problem for them? I like that. Yeah, and I, and I remember you telling me too that one of the organizations you've partnered with, you've been asked and you happily agreed to sign a, I think it's at least a year long contract at a uh, reduced rate, which will of course bring in less now, but you're really planting seeds. You're planting seeds that you can harvest later because I think some people would, would be willing to pay for a relationship that they can build upon in the future. Instead, what you're doing, you're offering a discount on your services. They're still paying you for a relationship that you can build upon. So when you have the vision that this is going to be a long play, it allows you to make smarter decisions and you're not worried about the money that's going to come in the door tomorrow. It's important to think about tomorrow, of course, but even more than that, you know, you can get by past tomorrow, but when we're talking about a year, two years, three years down the line, you want to have a nice size network, a nice size client base. And the only way to do that is to start planting those seeds and building those relationships. Yes, that's, cool. that's correct. Well, I really appreciate you helping me with these tips. Are there any tips that you want to offer that you think people might benefit from knowing? Gosh, everyone, I just say have fun. 
you know, doing what you do. It's you're able to do that with this partnership, you know, with Justin and the team. It, it makes it easy for you to have fun doing what you do. I like to experience the wow factor, I call it. So that's what, if you think about a rechargeable battery, every time I speak to a client and I deliver that, hey, here's what we can do for you. It's almost like plugging a rechargeable battery back into the wall socket because I know that every single time I do that, someone's going to say, oh, wow, that looks great. That looks amazing. And so I thrive on that wow factor of knowing that, you know, when I show this construction company, this website or this tow company, this website, the first thing you're going to say, they're going to say typically is, wow, that looks great. And so I love the wow factor. And so have fun knowing that when you walk in, you're going to get that wow. And from that point, it opens the door of asking, making it more comfortable to ask those questions of, hey, what do you think about it? You know, is there anything you would change? You know, how does this look and compare to your current site in which you already know that it's a night and day difference, but it's okay to ask them, let them say it. Oh my gosh, yeah. this is amazing. And so it makes walking towards that sale a lot easier for you. But you, you've got probably enough things to talk about to be in multiple chamber meetings, leading multiple chamber meetings every month and getting your face out there and having some fun doing it. Yeah, and just look at our what? blog. Yeah, I mean, yeah. We're always putting out new content that you can uh, get inspired by that is very presentation worthy in front of small businesses, 100%. And, and there's the resources. There's a database of resources uh, in your dashboard that I have reached into those resources a number of times to help me with it, you know, planning what I'm going to say at those workshops and, and things like that and even leave behind. So, you know, there's literature uh, that you can pull from and, and share with your clients and create a whole talking point around it. So you've got the resources. Challenge yourself to find the wow. You can be very successful doing this part time even, but making sure that you're strategic in, in what you're doing. Like I said, I'm excited for everyone that's uh, in the partnership. And, you know, I know that you can make it a successful partnership. You know, be strategic in what you do. Be passionate about what you do and not be afraid to get out there and grow your network. And don't be yeah. afraid to say no. That's say right. no when you need to, because that's going to grow your network. You're absolutely right. Those were awesome. I appreciate you giving us that insight. So Chacha, how can people find out more about you or follow you on this journey of yours? Uh, sure. So if you visit our website, CaliforniaBeacons.com, you know, you're able to see previous podcasts, uh, you know, previous uh, videos, uh, workshops. And so that'd be a great place to learn more about what we do and engage with us. And, and the contact information is, is there as well. So I usually, uh, when there's upcoming workshops and free workshops, marketing workshops, those are usually posted on the, on the website. Oh, that's awesome. I think everyone is watching this should be going there because you will probably learn something from what Chacha is putting out into the world, just like you've learned something over the course of this interview, because she's a wealth of information and knowledge, and she's kind enough to share it with all of us. And for that, Chacha, we are deeply appreciative. So with that said, thank you for doing this with us. I think everyone is saying the same things to their computer screens or their mobile screens right now. Thank you. And I wish you nothing but the best of luck as you continue on this journey. You absolutely deserve it. Clearly you've earned it. And hopefully we'll get a chance to do this again soon where we can follow up and see where you're at next time. Thank you. I appreciate you inviting me and having me. So I'm, I'm so glad to be able to share. I'm, I'm sure I've been in, uh, you know, there's many businesses that are in the shoes that I started in. And that was, you know, that, that growth of not knowing where to start, not knowing how to start. And hopefully this has added some insight to help you know, people kind of kick that fire starting. So I'm excited to hear some of those stories of how some of uh, the partners are kickstarting their wow factors in their business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And folks, Cha Cha is just like you. She's a site swan client. She's a reseller building and selling websites to small businesses. The experience that she's got comes from doing exactly what you're doing. The way she speaks, 
her knowledge and expertise comes from a lot of it from doing exactly what you're doing. So keep doing it. And yeah, you could be just like Cha Cha. <laughs> Thank oh, you again I, so much. Forward. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.